Hi, Zachary. Good morning. Hi, good morning. Thank you for joining. Um, I think we are just <laughs> early in the meeting, so hopefully we'll have some more folks joining in. Okay, sounds good. I appreciate you uh, being here. <laughs> no, no, totally. <laughs> Do you work on observability? I just started to, yeah. So I have a, a contract that I'm supposed to be an observability implementation expert using the Honeycomb tool. Oh, and, cool. Um, with another contract, I have, um, uh, I, I'm the tech lead for a product, and then there's a bigger product that mm -hmm. has observability tools. So I want to start integrating all those observability tools. Mm -hmm. So I'm learning it from kind of like a software engineering perspective and like a, a DevOps perspective. It's it's or operations perspective. I really nice. Uh, it's good, really good. nice. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it's a, it's always a good. Uh, you know, I mean the. Great thing about observability, you know, in general, is that it's um it's a platform service, you know, but it sits on top of rides on top of you know a lot of other um layers, and and uh you inherit a lot of the observability from you know like if you're running a Kubernetes stack, uh mm -hmm. there's a lot of enablement. So I'm sure that as you're integrating you know different parts in your pro in the product you're working on. Huh. Uh, it's just, something you can you can leverage, and that's by design. There's already admitted tele telemetry code and those types of tools. Yeah, yeah. Tools amazing. That's I okay. I never thought about that. <laughs> yes, I mean because you know if you don't instrument each of the layers, then you know how do you actually collect metrics, right? right? Or how do you collect traces? Or how do you collect logs? So, um, so instrumentation, you know, is super. Uh, useful on the on the other part, other side. Hi Vijay, how are you? Good morning. Hmm. What what two sides would those be for instrumentation? Because you would have so on the... on the instrumentation side, right? Like for example, if you're using um open telemetry for collection, right? And and what open telemetry does is it typically has SDKs, which are libraries that you can uh, instrument your applications with to collect mm -hmm. the metrics mm -hmm. and then you have the other side where you're sending um, mm. the telemetry over to your data stores mm -hmm. hi Shiva hi Vijay how are you good morning hey good morning hey, hello, good, morning. hey. <laughs> good morning good morning I think I I was uh, uh, I'm I'm pleasantly surprised that folks are joining in because this is a July Fourth weekend in the U.S. and typically people are out of office, so it's it's nice to see everyone. We'll just wait for another minute and then get started. Uh, we'll keep it short and sweet, you know, unless uh, you know maybe uh, typically we do forty five minutes and today probably. If we have topics, you know, we can kind of run over, run into the use up all our forty five minutes. Else, you know, keep it short and sweet. Um, let me just share, and we can uh, just wait for another minute, and then get started. Can you see my screen? Let's see. Uh, <clears throat> you see my screen? Yes. Okay, cool. Awesome. So uh, again, Zachary uh, and Shiva, I think uh, you've joined before. I'm not sure. Uh, Vijay, again, is our um, uh, lead uh, for our query language specification work group. Mm -hmm. So he's, he's um, you know, a regular uh, attendee and also a lead. But um, again, Shiva, uh, nice to see you. Uh, have you been uh, part of the uh, meetings before? Uh, uh, no, Lalita. This is my first meeting. Uh, by the way, like you know, my name is Shiva. I'm a senior uh, architect in AWS. Wonderful, I'm wonderful. Observability. As okay. Well as, uh, Keda as well. Cool, cool, cool. Great, great, great to have you. And then again, thank you for joining in. Uh, I think Matt uh, was hoping to join, but he is uh, probably running late. So we can get started. Um, and typically what we do is we use this uh, you know, meeting 
for uh, discussing several you know different types of observability topics as well as um, kind of coming in and um, talking about some of the areas of work that is happening across the projects and in the work groups that the tag has. Uh, and we also have, you know, often uh, a lot of uh, various end users who come in with some of their questions as well as, um, you know, uh, again, if, you, if you're interested in presenting on a particular topic, you can always uh, do that here. So with that said, again, I'll just run through first, you know, a couple of proposals that we have been looking at. Uh, and maybe uh, Vijay, since you're here, uh, we can also get an update on the work group because I know you guys had a really excellent session uh, last week. So I think that would be nice. Uh, but let me run through the, um, just the admin topics first. First of all, you know, these uh, tag meetings are governed by the code of conduct for the CNCF. So in case you haven't read it, you know, please <laughs> familiarize yourself with it. We have a link on top of this document, which is a link to the calendar invite. This is the CNCF code of conduct. And of course, uh, if you don't know, we are, uh, we are a Slack channel also, tag observability on the CNCF Slack. Uh, and please do join in because we have a pretty large community there and, you know, folks occasionally join in into the meetings based on their availability. Uh, and also there are some help wanted issues on our repos in GitHub. So if you want to get involved there, you're welcome to also, you know, submit issues as well as um, get involved. So with that said, um, the first topic I had at least, and I wanted to kind of bring that up is that we have an exciting uh, discussion ongoing with some of the APAC end users as well as a, you know vendors who are working in open source observability in the CNCF. Uh, and uh, if you look at this issue, again, there's discussion for setting up a time uh, for the tag observability meeting also for APAC. Uh, which means that, you know, we usually do um, first and third uh, Tuesdays of the month on uh, the U.S. Uh, Europe uh, time zones, you know, Europe friendly time zones, which is, you know, 9 a.m. in the morning. But now we will also do another tag meeting on the second um, uh, Tuesday of the month, once a month. Um, and the proposal is to do it at 5 to 6 p.m. Pacific time, which is um, friendly to Asia, uh, which is typically, you know, China through Japan, uh, at least Singapore, you know, Japan covers between 9 to 10 a.m. Uh, in the morning and um, 10 to 11 in Japan. So exciting. Um, and again, there's several folks who are interested. So if you have, you know, uh, fellow members who are based out of Asia, please invite them to join in. Uh, and, you know, this will also be led by some of the community members already involved in observability from there. So that should be pretty exciting uh, to do. Um, similarly, sorry, I just noticed that I didn't have my video on. <laughs> but um, uh, the other area that I wanted to just call out is that we have an exciting tech talk coming up in the, um, uh, in the July 16th session. Uh, which is uh, empowering observability with open search and open telemetry. Again, this is some of the work that has been done by the open search team. So I invited them to come and speak about what uh, they are doing with open search, you know, as they use it also for observability use cases. Uh, and the project, as you all know, is open source. So um, it really is, you know, looking at metrics, traces, and log support uh in open search and the speaker is ani uh, jadav who is one of the open source search core contributors from aws so i uh, just wanted to call that out and again spread the word uh, if folks are interested you know please ask them to join in next time um and last but not least the only other call out i had is the cfp for observability day at kubecon na in salt lake city is still open so again, if you haven't submitted a talk proposal yet, uh, and typically these talk proposals are very focused on open source um, components that you're run using for observability, 
uh, do submit a proposal. You can do a lightning talk, you know, which is a short five minute uh, pitch, or you can actually do a full session or a tutorial if you're interested. Um, but this, this, you know, if you're not familiar, fundamentally is a single day event, which is co-located with KubeCon. So um, with that said, again, those were only the topics I wanted to kind of uh, cover. But uh, Vijay, it would be great if we could get an update from you um, because um, it would be actually nice to kind of cover some of the key areas that you guys have been discussing in the talks and QLS. Uh, sure, Lalita. Uh, we had uh, the folks from uh, Profana Labs uh, do the presentation uh, yes. on TraceQL last week, mm -hmm. and uh, we also are trying to schedule in in an uh, Europe-friendly time for uh, the LockQL uh, readout as well uh, from Cyril, who's also from uh, Rafana Labs. So that, okay. that work is in flight, and we're also trying to awesome. see if we can get uh, uh, the Victoria metric folks to come on to do the metric QL uh, readout as well. Um, so uh, that that's that's in flight. We also, or Chris came up with uh, a rubric uh, on how we should uh, try and fit all the languages into to see how much of the rubric each one is able to score off. And uh, uh, we have also started to uh, try to see if there have been some patterns around how people have been uh, building the languages out. So cool, we're cool. making good progress. Um, we'll also start work on end user service in the near future as well. Yes. Uh, slow start to the year, but I think like it is. Uh, yes, in definitely. The last uh, few weeks, I uh, know that this has more, more time. No, very cool. Thanks, Vijay, because I think this is really exciting. Um, I think there have been several conversations and you know presentations on the query language support that exists. Uh, were you uh, you know could you take away um, uh, any uh, key highlights from the TraceQL presentation, uh, which were useful for? you know, the standardization uh, rubric that you've been looking at? Uh, I think uh, TraceQL is fairly feature-rich and uh, even mm. folks in Microsoft uh, uh, who attended the session uh, were very enthusiastic about certain features that were uh, that are available on TraceQL. Uh, so, uh, yeah, it's interesting to say the least. Okay, cool, cool. I mean, so it can actually serve to provide uh, more feedback into you know some of the um, finalization of the spec that we want to kind of do for tracing is that is that right. a I think statement? In, in general there are uh, at least with uh, conversations with multiple folks uh, both in monodrama mm -hmm. uh, and outside in this uh, uh, in this regards there are there are two camps that are there the sql camp and the pipe based uh, camp yes. so i think like uh, figuring out uh, uh, one or the other in terms of how we want to take it uh, forward in the long run i think that would be uh, one of the first things that uh, first hurdles that we might need to cross mm -hmm. uh, both that i think like uh, I, uh, once we pick one uh, one of the incumbents in that camp will basically start to surface like uh, for example pp uh, P, uh, the ppl from open search and uh, mm -hmm. the uh, sql all are pipe based uh, uh, if we decide Languages. to go pipe based then there are a lot of there are a lot of uh, uh, learnings from those that we could, we could take forward there. but do you, do you think i mean again pipe based uh, dsls are more aligned with uh, with you know what we want to kind of see in um, in in the observability query language um, world because um, it can go either way right I mean SQL has standardized over time and many many you know years of work if you will and and implementations uh, DSLs typically have been the way to go in the observability world with every vendor kind of doing their own but that has also caused a lot of fragmentation in the user space as we all are familiar with so um where where do you see that you know kind of landing in i think uh, it largely uh, 
depends on uh, what is the scope of the language. Uh, I think like uh, one of the big arguments for SQL uh, outside of it being a specification is that uh, it is also portable for uh, uh, business analytics. Mm -hmm. Uh, where uh, you're you want you're trying to do really complex things and you have the ability to write really large queries and uh, things like that. Pipe paste uh, the for is basically simplicity, uh, yeah. and really it, it's more it's more catered towards just observability. Uh, yeah. So I think like uh, once we hear from end users on okay, do they really care for uh, mixing business analytics and uh, general purpose observability to the point where uh, it is absolutely a requirement uh, that that would also weigh on if we need to do SQL. Uh, yeah. But the, the biggest con for SQL is that it's too chatty. Agreed, I agree. And, and, and you know, I think that it is um, very interesting to see that you know a lot of times bi use cases get highlighted as observability and uh, while you know at a very 100000 foot level they may sound the same but they're not because um, you know as we have seen uh, again systems um, analytics are quite different from uh, really business analytics if you will uh, and while you could kind of retrofit the same query language into both supporting, you know, both layers. But I, I think that that's one of the reasons why DSLs got so popular is because they were focused right on, on, on specifically um, observability uh, queries. Um, and, and as we go into the world of, you know, just more advanced applications, um, I really think that, Simplicity actually does work <laughs> and it does help to be focused, but uh, there's an argument to be made for SQL also, although I would say even in the BI world, right, um, I think there is a lot of back and forth between SQL versus non-SQL and there are obviously, you know, Tableau, for example, supports, you know, both its own language as well as standard uh, queries, but there are, you know, typically DSLs in that space too, right? By vendors, so right. I'm not sure if the if that argument holds as much. <laughs> right, yeah. I think I think like uh, regardless of uh, which direction we end up yeah. taking, I think the the standardization aspect of it and people uh, wanting to. Adopt the standard is what would tip the scales in terms of uh, the fragmentation going away. Mm -hmm. Now, SQL alone or uh, uh, pipe-based in itself without people latching on wouldn't uh, go get us too far. Yeah, agreed. agreed. So I think like uh, the, the the adoption is where uh, we'll we'll really need to figure out uh, how this can move forward. Mm -hmm. Or the yeah. acceptance, not even adoption. Yeah, it's. I mean, again, I think I think there is great value in publishing, at least a initial um, proposal for you know the key uh, features that need to exist in any um, you know implementation. And is that something that uh, the work group is targeting for uh, before KubeCon? Or is that something we won't, you uh, think we won't be able to get to? I think uh, the rubric in itself uh, uh, covers a lot of mm -hmm. what uh, a language should have. Uh, so it should be reasonably straightforward to convert that into uh, sort of a requirement mm -hmm. type of the document. Mm -hmm. uh, but at the same time, like uh, uh, we will need to uh, finish a good chunk of uh, end user interviews to uh, make the recommendation uh, because yes, uh, end of the day, this, this is for the, for the end users. Yeah, I mean, one of the places that uh, perhaps we could help with the, you know, since I chaired the end user um, 
uh, technical group uh, is that we could do a call for you know uh, feedback there and if we do have a survey we can okay. certainly get folks to uh, respond there so let me know you know it's like um, because we you know there is a regular sync uh, that happens uh, for the end user okay. community so if we can get the survey oh. uh, assembled, you, you know, short and sweet, then maybe we can kind of schedule a session where folks just, you know, kind of do this um, on Slack even and just submit it back to the work group. Okay, sounds good. Yeah, uh, Chris and I will take your contact offer. Yeah, uh, yeah, because I mean, at least, at least getting feedback would be the first step, right? So, correct survey, um, you know, responses from end users. So, um, yeah, let's circle back and let's figure out, you know, like how can we get more feedback coming in uh, and, you know, just go from there. It's iterative because, you know, again, we'll, uh, uh, you know, it's always the, the need is driven by folks, you know, who are actually most interested in solving that fragmentation issue. We are all faced by it, you know, and, and again, even for folks who are, not here okay, in so, you know joining yeah. the call they still agree with that right so it's not something uh that is not a reality so let's let's you know kind of get a i would say get a um subset of you know responses which are which represent which are representative and then we can iterate on it as we go along that's good yeah, video, but thank you. I mean, this is very helpful. And I think that um, Chris and I have been iterating uh, on the getting the videos, uh, talks of the talks posted. So um, we'll keep, you know, let's chat on Slack. Uh, it's just that I think there's a whole, you know, process for getting folks added to publish the videos. So it's it's uh, CNCF iteration again. <laughs> So, okay. Okay. Sounds good. But but uh, I'll circle back on Slack. Uh, thank you again. Uh, and and again, uh, I think that's all we wanted to kind of cover today. Given our other two work groups that are ongoing are kind of uh, in uh, in in transit. I guess people are just not here today. Uh, the only other thing I wanted to kind of highlight again is that we do have a GitHub uh, repo. So if you are interested in you know specific topics for either experts to come and present on or um, even, you know, publish papers on. Uh, we typically do do research, you know, in our work groups in order to, you know, get user feedback, being able to, you know, propose and make a specification proposal. So if you have topics you're interested in, you know, please just add them to the GitHub um, and, and uh, let's go from there. Um, Again, uh, Shiva, you're joining in for the first time. So is there specific areas you were looking for in this tag or uh, you, were you just curious? Uh, yeah, thanks, Salalita. So I just joined as a curious member, So, but I'm, I'm, I'm starting to focus on open telemetry. Uh, okay, so. okay, awesome. Yeah, so please, again, you know, feel free to join in if there are areas that you want to kind of uh, call out. Again, you know, please don't be shy. Um, you know, you're welcome to also present uh, if you're looking at a dot, you know, from AWS or any integrations um, or improvements that are being done on open telemetry, you know, feel free to present also. Yeah. But um, typically, you know, again, um, folks just, you know, kind of reach out to me or reach out to uh, Matt and we figure out, you know, like what schedule, what day is available and and uh, it's pretty easy to present. Yeah. Thanks, Lolita. <laughs> sure. Uh, hi, Sunil, how are you? <laughs> Thanks for joining oh, in. I'm good, thank you. How are you? Um, so I had a question on the, when you talked about the, um, some of the <laughs> topics to present, I was curious about the KubeCon, uh, since CFP is closed, um, I was uh, wondering if there are any, Area topics to present at KubeCon? Are there like any late submission acceptance? No, actually, uh, I was, uh, you know, just talking about there is an observability day that is co located with KubeCon. And you actually can submit the talks till, I think it's open till July 14th 
or okay. 22nd. So you can still actually submit there and you do have the opportunity to, you know, submit a short talk like lightning talks or uh, full talks, like 35 minute talks. So uh, please use that uh, in order to submit. Sure. Yeah. Thank you for that um, heads up on the dead deadline side of things. So, um, so I was also curious with the registration pass and all that. Uh, so if that topic is accepted, do the speaker get a uh, pass or? Yes. They have... Yes. Typically. Yes. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And, and that's, uh, that's the good thing about, you know, kind of also getting involved in the larger community, because if your talks are accepted, absolutely. You know, you can, um, uh, speakers are always invited uh, with, with passes. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Totally. Great. Yeah. <laughs> it's in Salt Lake City this time, so it should be close to the West Coast and the East Coast. <laughs> it's <laughs> midway, so not too bad. Uh, right. And I think it's the 6th, uh, I think it's 6th through November 6th or November 11th, something um, I'm forgetting the date. But um, uh, again, it's the early November uh, time frame. Okay, sure. Yeah, definitely looking forward to uh, meet people who are going to be yeah, there. Yeah, I mean, you typically there's actually a very nice community uh, at KubeCon, which actually meets up. Uh, and we typically do meet up, you know, both at the um, tag observability maintainer talk, as well as the, uh, you know, specific talks in observability day, as well as the observability track uh, that is held. Um, uh, you know, every year at KubeCon. So lots of opportunity to really meet fellow end users as well as uh, vendors who are working on open source projects. Right, right. Awesome. Thank you. Sure, sure. Certainly. All right. Let's uh, give it a couple of minutes. If you guys have any other um, topics that you'd like to bring up, um, ask away. Otherwise, I think we can end at... Um, um, at 9.30, which is uh, on the hour, a half an hour. I think Vijay dropped off, so um, we are in good shape. I think, you know, it was nice to see Zachary. Zachary, again, you know, if you have any questions, don't be shy, he'll ping us on Slack. If you're not on CNCF Slack, you know, I'd encourage you to be on it. Uh, there's a very large community uh, on Slack. And, um, you know, if you have any questions, all questions are good um, on Slack. And uh, Shiva also, you know, please do join in uh, going forward. I have invited other folks from the uh, hotel teams as well as, you know, others to join in. So folks join in, okay, you know, again, not everyone joins in on every meeting, but we do try to gather together and discuss several topics. We have a talk next next time, so two weeks from now. So that should be an interesting one. Thank you. Oh, one last question I had, Alita, was um, that are there uh, commercial offerings uh, of the observability, uh, open telemetry, um, uh, of the GitHub repos, I was curious. So um, the way that, uh, you know, the CNCF um, works with its ecosystem, right, is that the core foundational technologies are obviously Apache 2 licensed open sourced in uh, CNCF, right? Open Telemetry is one of them, Prometheus is another one, Jaeger is another one. So all the popular stacks of, are available in the CNCF and typically, end users you know, can use those projects directly because distributions of the components are available from the projects themselves. But if you're looking for support, right? Because again, uh, even if you deploy a particular stack and you want to have a commercial support structure uh, around that you know, uh, stack, then it's easy for you to be able to go to, you know, vendors in the observability space who actually do provide support around that. So in open telemetry's case, uh, there is a list uh, which is the registry for um, you know different uh, 
uh, supported um, distributions of open telemetry uh, and you can take a look uh, and the and you know folks providing uh, support for open telemetry distributions are listed there so i would encourage you to go to opentelemetry.io and mm -hmm. look at the registry uh, it's called you know the registry and you can see you know the supported uh, distributions there okay great Thank you. Yeah, and and again, you can absolutely get support from vendors, you know, if you if that's what you're looking for. Sure. Yeah. Thank you. Sure. Sure. Totally. Hi, Sherpa. Thank you for joining in. We were just going to, you know, drop off shortly because we kind of finished our topics. But it's nice to see you. <laughs> Uh, and and I was just reiterating again. We have a pretty interesting talk next week, uh, next time on July sixteenth, which is the uh, talk on uh, open search uh, as an observability uh, solution. Uh, and as you know, open search is an um, AWS supported open source project today, but it is you know also uh, very widely used. Uh, it's, it's an Apache version of Elasticsearch, as you know, and, uh, has kind of been adopted in the observability world also for, you know, metrics and as well as traces, uh, but logs primarily, you know, as a baseline and then kind of going into, um, uh, uh, tracing and then also starting to think about metrics, but they do tightly integrate with open telemetry. And that's what they're going to talk about, uh, the next time. So um, again, if you guys are available, you know, please feel free to ask your teams to join in too. I think that's all we had today. Um, and uh, again, you know, we have uh, several good notes, Shilpa, if you're looking at, you know, specific areas. Uh, again, uh, please take a look at the <laughs> docs. But uh, we're going to drop off uh today and end here at this point and again everyone have a wonderful uh long weekend we will surface back on july 16th again thanks thank you. <laughs> take care thank, thank you. you bye bye, bye.